Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews. For over 15 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs of one one I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show. Well, we're meeting with Joshua Malik, the CEO of the Joshua Tree Franchise Opportunity. And since 2005, Joshua Tree has built a reputation in the Lehigh Valley and Buxmont areas as being one of the most trusted names in tree services, lawn care, and pest control. We're going to talk to Joshua about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we have a great show. Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no-obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews, from Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs one one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show. Well, we're meeting with Joshua Malik, and Joshua is the CEO of the Joshua Tree Franchise Opportunity. And since 2005, Joshua Tree has built a reputation in the Lehigh Valley and Buxmont areas as being one of the most trusted names in tree services, lawn care, and pest control. Hi, Joshua. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Marty. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, this is my pleasure, Joshua. We always like to ask our guests, where are you calling from this morning, Joshua? Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. That's about an hour north of the Philadelphia region and about an hour, 20 minutes west of New York. This is, this is going to shock you. So I've, I've been doing this show, Joshua, for 15 years now, and I've interviewed franchises in, you know, of course, the United States, Canada, uh, Israel, Australia, and I'm actually in eastern Pennsylvania, so I'm in the Lehigh Valley. So I was so excited to talk to you today. I said, oh, my God, there's a franchise in my backyard. So, um, And I'm familiar with your brand, too, so, so it's really a pleasure for me to have you on the show today. 
Oh, that's so cool. You know, it's funny. I think your your intro you talk about from uh, I think you say from Eastern Pennsylvania yes. to like Australia or something. <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm like, did that say Eastern Pennsylvania right. or Eastern? <laughs> I'm like, how you. funny is that? <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, it is. It is so cool. So I am so ex- I've been so excited to interview. And you know, thinking I'm thinking about the the history, Joshua, because I you know been studying your background for a week. You know, and I guess. You know, if we talk a little bit about the history, I guess maybe we can either go back to, you know, when you graduated from high school or it sounds like Joshua Tree kind of officially got started around 2005. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the history and highlights of, of Joshua Tree over the years. Yeah, you know what? It's 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 a great trade. Um, I started in the industry very early. Uh, as you said, yeah. I graduated in, 90, in 92. And mm-hmm. instead of going to college, I got right into the tree care trade. So That's this is great. actually, this will be my 31st year in this industry. Wow. Um, you know, worked a, around a lot of different areas. And yeah, I think the persona of this industry is like, it, it really is it's not a career. Maybe it's a hold me over job, but mm-hmm. it really, arboriculture has come a long way uh, the yeah. past 20 years. And, and that's what I've seen at least over, over my time in this industry. In 2005, I launched uh, Joshua Tree Experts from mm-hmm. a 100 uh, square foot office, my home office. Wow. I had, I had one forestry truck, one chipper. I had a wow. spray truck that I used, and I gotta tell you, man, I had a really, I had a really good career going for me at that time, and I had yeah. a really good job. Yeah. And when when I was working, I was working in sales and management. And I remember my former employer when when I started my job with him, I said, hey, I said I'm going to give you five years, and I said I really have the ambition. I said I want to start my own business, and mm-hmm. I really did. Five years later, I, I followed through, and I I saved up my money, and I and and I was doing really good. And when I say doing really good. My family was very nervous for me. <laughs> I was yeah, taking a course. big step into, into entrepreneurship. Yeah. And not that I didn't have the support, but they were really like, why are you leaving such a good thing? And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, man, I, I know I can do a better thing here. And, and, I, and I really I want to grow more than just income, right? I was making a really yeah. good income, but how could I take some other tax advantages? How could I grow some wealth for myself? And that's mm-hmm. what made me decide to, to launch Joshua Tree Experts. We had a really good niche in 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 my service area mm-hmm. where there was a lot of other tree care companies and a lot of them were very focused on tree removal procedures mm-hmm. and you know when i was i've already been in the industry uh, at that point in 2005 for 13 years i had a lot of certifications to back up my knowledge in the industry and i really focused more on tree development and tree care tree preservation and i targeted that market um, and i branded the the business around that you'll never get a a marketing or advertising piece from Joshua Tree that talks about, you know, removing your tree. We talk about how do we improve the, the function, the aesthetics, and the value of your landscape, and we really build relationships with our – to mm-hmm. perform that type of service. So we grew pretty quickly. Uh, so so fortunate. In 2009, I, I was able to get a commercial property uh, within wow. our service area, <clears throat> and we continued to develop, train our staff. We took on more infrastructure staff. Uh, for our office and behind our sales and marketing team, supporting our finance and admin team. And we really, we had a really good niche in the general tree care. When I say general Mm -hmm. tree care, that's the pruning, um, cable embracing, uh, plant health care is insect disease management, soil amendments, Mm -hmm. fertilizers. And we, our clients were really, really happy with our service. And we started getting requests of doing some other services from our clients, and that was lawn care. And we started developing a a lawn care program. We put about two years of research into it. And then in 2017, we really launched our lawn care. We marketed it very well. That Mm -hmm. part of our business today, and that lawn care is fertilizer, weed control. It's the... Uh, aeration seeding that makes up about forty percent of our business right now. Okay. Continued to grow. Had the same thing happening with with pest control. We had a lot of people, uh, mosquito flea and tick companies were uh, starting to uh, come around our market. We had a lot of clients requesting and asking us about that service. We launched pest control in twenty twenty, and then in the uh, that same that same uh, year there. Uh, we decided to actually the following year in 2021 we decided to launch a second corporate location about an hour south of my headquarters in the Lehigh mm-hmm. Valley, and uh, they just completed their second full year there, and uh, wow. we we launched our franchise system. What a great story, Joshua! I, I love the story. It was interesting how you were telling the story, uh, you know, w- with your parents, you know, because entrepreneurship 
can be a, a scary thing. I remember when I started my first business in 1999, I, I had a really good job. I was working um, on a Mad- for a Madison Avenue firm, and, and I just quit. And I, I remember my dad saying to me, he's like, well, what about 401k? What about medical insurance? I was like, none of that, you know? <laughs> and it's just, but, but you, you knew it at a very <laughs> early age, right? I mean, it, it's fantastic. Um, and I like how you came up with the name, too. Did, did you know, like, even when you were working for this other gentleman, did you have the vision of, of call? I, I love the name Joshua Tree, you know, I, I, Joshua, uh-huh. Joshua Tree Experts. I mean, did, did you, were you thinking about all those things as you were working for this other gentleman? I did. I really did. I actually, I, I planned out. I love the plan. Um, I think, you know, without yeah. a plan, you're making some very quick decisions that, that right. maybe are going to be mistakes down the road and going to be costly ones. Right. So I'm, I'm big into planning and really, you know, providing a vision, not just for myself, but for my people also where we're going. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about a year prior to that that I really, you know, developed my fictitious name. I yeah. started making contacts as in regards to different marketing agencies for my right. launch, uh, getting my insurance in everything in place, my software, my CRM set up, wow. where I built it up pretty good, where I, I really launched in a position that – but my last day of my my job that I had at that time, my full time job, I got yeah. right into to doing treat my my business where I was I was in it full time. You're ready. <clears throat> yeah, I was ready. I was. That's fantastic. What what do you you know? As I said, I was studying your background, Joshua, and and, and when when I read about you. It seems like, you know, you have this passion for the industry. You knew at, at a pretty early age, I mean, I think, you know, from graduating from high school, there was something about this industry that that you like, you're very passionate about, it. and I can see you always is doing it. But, but what is it that you like most about it? I really like, I, I love nature. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a big outdoorsman. Yeah. And I really like the people aspect. Not only am I working with mm-hmm. people within, you know, my business, but I'm 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 working with vendors. I'm working with clients, and I'm going out, and I'm able to listen. I'm giving them solutions. They're coming to me with issues, uh, whether it's a, a tree care issue, a lawn care issue, pest control issue. Right. We're able to go out and diagnose those diagnose those issues and give them solutions, and we really build relationships from that. Um, I've met so many people through the networking part of this business, and you know, at first. Marty, it was when I got out of school, um, I was a, I would say I was pretty much of a, an adrenaline junkie. I was rock climbing, I was skydiving, I was motocross yeah, wow. racing. And I was like, yo, climbing trees? I can right. do that, right? And, wow. and, I, and I really enjoyed the eight years that I spent in the field. I really did. But there was a part where it's like I really wanted to learn about arboriculture. I yeah. really wanted to diagnose. Learn. I was a lot of – businesses within this industry are very, very small mom and pop businesses. Mm-hmm. And when I talk yes. about the focus on tree preservation, those smaller companies really focus on tree removal aspects. So they're really good at doing the tree removal part, but it's a little bit out of their comfort zone on when it comes to how do you properly prune a tree? How do you identify insects, disease, viruses, bacteria? How do you provide product and application services to, to cure those and you know, restrain those diseases from coming about again. Right. I really took interest in that. And it, it was not only an interest as in, hey, personal interest, but, you know, the business interest part of that is that, that, that's the recurring revenue end. And that's a, a yeah. large part of what this industry doesn't capture on is the recurring revenue. So as we develop that plant health care system, uh, the lawn care and the pest control, that gives us about 60% of our revenue right now per year. Right. And that is what drives our recurring revenue and we just complete dupl- we just continue to duplicate that year after year. So it sounds like Joshua, like probably in the early stages when you were doing <clears throat> all this planning, I, I think a lot of um, great surprises and opportunities kind of came your way because maybe you didn't think about you know as, as a young person um, franchising the concept. So I'm curious, you know, when when you knew you were ready to to to, to, to franchise the concept. Um, and, and, and even these additional revenue streams, which I think is, is so clever. I mean, it makes sense to have these additional revenue streams. But did you know that early on, or was it, again, something that just kind of happened from customers saying, you know, do you do this, or do you know someone who does that, or is, is that how all that happened? You know, it was in, in 2019. I'm, I'm, I remember my thought process. <laughs> yeah. I was, at a, I was at a seminar. I remember I was down in Florida, and, again, I was networking with a lot of companies. Mm-hmm. 
And just like a lot of seminars, you leave, you're energized, right? You have all these different thought ideas yes. and processes. Yes. And I had a, a decent team with me down there. And as we were traveling back and, you know, the weeks to come, we really talked about a growth plan for the business. Right. And I really started entertaining. I, I thought we have a, a very good model that could be franchised and could be duplicated uh, in mm-hmm. other regions of the country. I hired someone that year. So we, we were growing at that time very quickly, mm-hmm. and we already had processes and systems in place, right? We just didn't have right. them documented. You know, we right. had a process for our sales team and how we, you know, communicate and how we talk to our clients and how we send them the proposal and how we do our follow we had this for our, our field team, you know, hey, when you come in, here's your morning routine. This is what you do when you get to the job site. This is how you use the CRM that, that we're utilizing. Uh-huh. We had it for our, our HR sources. So we just needed to put it in developing our paper. So hiring that person, we knew, hey, let's let's get all of our systems and processes documented. And as we turn the table, let's give it two years and let's let's launch. So we did some planning. We did some studying. Uh, I really looked at the franchise system on on what was working for companies Mm -hmm. and started networking with uh, some consultants. And then it it was in 2021 that uh, I got hooked up with a consultant and said, hey, let's let's move forward. And that's what we did. Yeah, it's it's such a great story, Joshua. I love love as you're telling this story. And it sounds like you worked with some really good consultants, too. I think some of them, you know, we've had on the show over the years. I I think maybe one of them might have been Steve Bagelman. I think he's in he's he's in the Philadelphia area and uh, Charles and Turnicola, you know. But I, I know you work with some really strong people, you know, to help you, you know, get this thing off the ground. And I I think that's fantastic. And you know, you're mentioning like you know CRM and things like that. Probably in the old days, I imagine when you first started, you know, I mean, you use technology, but I mean, technology seems to grow so so quickly. It's hard to keep up. And so, how are you using technology uh, today, Joshua, compared to you know 15 years ago? Yeah, it's great. You know, everything, you know, 15 years ago and, and beyond, everything was handwritten, right? Yeah. <laughs> you'd you'd <laughs> go out and you'd, you'd handwrite your proposal yes. and, and give someone, you know, what looked yeah. like chicken scratch on a piece of yep. paper <laughs> and hope that they could decipher what you were doing. Yeah. Um, technology, we, we definitely embrace technology. Um, we use a lot of different platforms. One of our main platforms that we use is we use a, a, a CRM called Single Ops. Mm-hmm. And what Single Ops is really, it's our most utilized software within the company. When a client okay. calls in, we use that for lead generation. We use that for our operations team as in routing jobs, mm-hmm. scheduling services. Our production team utilizes it as in right. start and stop times and recording product usage. And we use it for for follow up emails. We use it for reporting mm-hmm. for our sales teams for close ratio, average job uh, values, what's our penetration rate. So it really gives wow. us a very very powerful you know end user experience. Okay. Um, yeah. We use other software for uh, for our HR platform where mm-hmm. our employees are able to punch in and punch out. We do all of our onboarding within that software. It holds all their training certifications. We can get notifications. They can see their their benefits of their 401k. They can see their health benefits wow. in there. It's super, super useful. We use GPS tracking on all of our service vehicles and our sales wow. vehicles. Um, that single ops that we talked about integrates with uh, mm-hmm. QuickBooks, which is our POS system. So right. we set up our chart of accounts. What's great with all these services, they're duplicatable to our franchise system. So we partnered wow. with these companies knowing that, hey, when we launch a franchise system, that they can get our chart of accounts in QuickBooks and be set up and not have to start that from scratch. The single ops will be the same thing where we can import all of the services that we're doing and all of the our product usage and SDS sheets where they will have instant access to that. We're huge with Google Suites. Uh, we use that mm-hmm. for our email, and we use Google Drive, and we use a lot of that for uh, you know for for all of our processes and systems that that we'll be able to share with our franchisees. It's like you said, <clears throat> Joshua. It's so powerful, isn't it? I mean, it's it's made life so much 
easier for you, you know, and, and more effective. It's really working smarter and not harder, isn't it? It does. It's, uh, you know, our, our biggest, the single loss becomes a selling tool. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you, you really get to, to continue that client relationship building by doing before service, you know, text, after service text. You can do group emailing from there. Our customer service team gets to see every single service that our clients are, are performing. We have an indoor sales team that we can do calling mm-hmm. campaigns. They can see what type of services that are there. They can cross-sell to the service. They can We can do alerts to our clients. It is a, it's definitely a relationship type, just like it says, you know, um, yeah. CRM, it's a relationship type management platform. Right, because this is, this is a relationship type of business and, or businesses, and, you know, speaking of businesses, it, it's nice because <clears throat> you, you kind of do cross over, I guess you can say, right, to, I mean, you got the several different industries, you know, whether it's, of course, the, the tree industry or, you know, landscaping and, and pest control. It's, it's nice to have those multiple revenue streams for your franchisees, isn't it? It is, and you know, and, and we talked about how important the relationship is. We focus on the residential client. We have a, mm-hmm. a marketing strategy that is targeted towards a, a certain demographic, and 95% of our business is residential. And mm-hmm. we know and have learned over the years, it's like, you know, the more that we can talk to them, the more that we can visit them, and the more, hey, not a, our clients are the type of people that they want us to be able to say, you know, contact them and say, hey, we were driving by. We seen that right. maybe there's a. We had a storm come through a couple of weeks ago, and I, I noticed, you know, the the large tree in the front has a broken branch up there. Right. Hey, why don't we have a crew come by? Um, you know, I see an issue with the lawn where we can really mm-hmm. they want that. Our clients and, and the people we're right. targeting. Listen, they don't want to deal with that. They don't want to take the time of having to pick up the phone right. and contact us. They want someone that's going to be proactive, and we train our our team to be that. What's a tough question, Joshua, but what's one of the most interesting things that's happened to you since launching Joshua Tree? I'm I'm assuming there's probably hundreds of stories, but, you know, does anything kind of stand out over the years since since you launched in in 2005 where you kind of say to yourself, wow, that's amazing? Probably the relationships that I've built with my team. Mm. Um, I'm a huge, I am, I'm a huge people person. I Mm -hmm. really believe that that people make a difference yeah. in your life, not just personally, but in, in, in business, you know, you're getting the right, right people in the right seat and, yeah. you know, having a mutual respect for each other, knowing that you can rely on your team and you don't have to bring every idea or answer to the table has been huge. I have, I've always talked and bragged about the people that surround me mm-hmm. and support the vision, support the right. growth of, of the business and I've just been, i got to be honest with you, Marty, I've been so fortunate to, to have really good people that, that want to grow, you know, yeah. the business and have stayed with me over the years and continue to, to push forward. Hey, it, entrepreneurship's not easy. You know, right. anyone that sits there and says to you, oh, yeah, this is a cake thing, it's like, come on, mm-hmm. it's not a cake thing, you know. <laughs> right. a normal business, you know, a lot of jobs are not yes. cake things, right? <laughs> well, this isn't a cake thing either, either right? There's there's highs yeah. and lows, and in, in, in emotional times, you got to ride out, and there's a lot of successes behind it, right? But when you yeah. have a really good team around you, um, they take a lot of that away. They do. They take a lot of, of that brute force and that emotion for you, and, and that's really awesome. That's great. You're talking about people, Joshua. So I'm curious. I mean, if you were <clears throat> meeting with with a prospective franchisee, um, what's important to you? I mean, are there any types of characteristics or traits that <clears throat> you want in your franchisees? Yeah, there absolutely is. Um, mm-hmm. if, if you hear about me with relationships, mm-hmm. I think having a very stable individual, um, 40 plus years old, is important to us. Maturity comes with, Mm -hmm. hey, you know, a little bit of of sales background is always good. They usually have a a drive, a very, you know, dominant, influential type personality. That's important. Mm -hmm. College educated, uh, you know, somewhat important, but really having that entrepreneur spirit, wanting to, you know, be extroverted, energetic, disciplined, sure. structured. Those are important things. And knowing that, hey, you have an investment when you when you enter into this business, okay? You do. You have right. an upfront cost to, to get in. There's a certain number of uh, pieces of equipment that come with that. This is 
what's great about this industry, Marty, and, and the opportunity here is it's not just an income job. And when I say that, right. you're not buying a job. You're not just getting income out of it. Mm-hmm. You're building wealth. And you're doing that yes. from day one. You're buying in where you're you're having the equipment and vehicle purchases, which are an instant asset on your balance sheet. That's mm-hmm. equity in the business immediately. As you right. grow and you develop, we want people that are going to, you know, further develop and grow their team where they mm-hmm. want to grow more equipment. They want to get into an operation center that, you know, you think about it, the tax advantages behind buying equipment, behind buying real estate and continuing to build your wealth and the equity that you have in the business, your real estate property. That's what's going to, you know, that's the long-term vision that I want people to be able to to think about and invest in and not right. just saying, hey, I'm going in, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a, a check from the business every week. It's more right. than that. It really right. is. And right. It, it's a no weekends, it's a no nights type of job, which I think mm-hmm. is pretty attractive to people. Yes, yes. Um, and, and, you know, we, we want the type of people that can, can embrace these things. That's terrific. Once <clears throat> once they decide that they want to come on board as a franchisee, Joshua, how, so how does the training work? Do, do they come out to the Lehigh Valley? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. They do. Yeah, we want them to come out to Lehigh Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do some pre-training. We'll do some okay. virtual pre-training before yeah. that they would come out to really get them ready for, for what would be an extensive, you know, one week of training at headquarters. And we do a lot of slide decks. We're going to do a lot of on-site, um, in-the-field type training. Uh, right. There's, You know, you got to think about it. There's client relationships. There's mm-hmm. financial budgeting. There's setting up marketing calendars. We have a very extensive training outline that are 32 hours of in-house training, and then we got 36 hours of on-the-job site training. Wow. Uh, once we complete that, we want them to launch within 45 days, and then we will come out to their site for three days and support them at their launch time. What? Because you've been doing this such a long time now, Joshua. What's what's a a, a typical day like for a, a Joshua Tree franchisee? I mean, maybe from like you know the moment they get into their office, or you know, how does that work? Yeah, you know, we're we're an early start business. Yeah. Um, 7 a.m. is is mm-hmm. when your your crews are going to uh, arrive at your operations center, and you know we don't we're not looking to take on franchisees to buy a, a bit, buy a job. And when I say that, it right. is, we we want we want to build entrepreneurs and show them how to operate a successful tree care, lawn care, pest control mm-hmm. business. Right. I don't want to teach them how to go out and spray trees. I don't want to teach them how to go out and cut trees. I want to teach them on how to recruit the people to do that. So Mm -hmm. they're really going to be that lead person in the morning. They're going to be getting their crews, uh, overseeing them to dispatch them to their job sites where they're, you know, getting out the door by, you know, 715, okay? Get them out, you know, get in your office, update your emails, look at the production from the, the prior day to make sure hey, the jobs that were on the schedule, they went through into invoicing. There was a follow-up, you know, a post-follow-up with the client. Hey, go out and see your crew then. Go check out your crew on site. Go do some interaction. Again, we talk about that client relationship Mm -hmm. building. Go do some interaction with that client. Do some interaction with the crew. Make sure that they're delivering the service. Uh, Make sure that they're following the processes and systems. Spend some time with your Arborist account manager. That's one of the biggest parts in this industry is really getting, Mm -hmm. you know, we talk about the tree care, you know, removal side, preservation side. We're Mm going to help our franchisees find an arborist that can go out and represent them in the sales process, spend time with them. And really it's going to be developing a lot of the marketing, developing a lot of the finance at the end of the day, making sure when the crews come back, again, they're following the PM process. Are they fueling Mm -hmm. up their trucks? Are they cleaning out their trucks? Are they getting their, you know, their gear ready for the next day? So when they do come in the next morning, they're firing up the trucks. They're letting them warm up. They're looking right. at their their tablets and what the jobs are for the day and loading up any materials. And they're getting on the job site. A lot of relationship building uh, mm-hmm. with your people and continuing to develop training. Great. As as I was saying earlier, when I was studying your background, Joshua. So you're <clears throat> you're certainly to me you're 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 an entrepreneur, and you know that the, the Individuals that typically listen to franchise interviews, we, we call them aspiring franchipreneurs. Most of them want to get into franchising, m- most of them probably for the first time. So it, it's kind of 
unfamiliar to them and, and and you know now because you're you're in this this business that you know there, there's so much out there so many of our listeners in the in the early stages are always confused they're like oh my god what, you know there's so many different industries or you know which which way do i look i mean from from everything you've learned up to this point what advice would you give to our listeners then in their quest to to, to buy a franchise i'd say trust your gut mm-hmm. um you yeah. don't hear a lot of noise from the outside you know do your research there's a lot of really good franchise opportunities uh, that are out there and you know focus on something that you're really going to enjoy doing I, i've yeah. been fortunate to, to really like what i do and really enjoy and love yeah. the green industry i think there's so many different avenues and you know maybe start backwards you know start from the end result of hey what you're trying to achieve Mm. And, and you know, work backwards. You know, what's the right. what's the end point of all this? You want to buy yeah. a business, right? You want to already get right. into something that has processes and systems is going to help you generate and launch way quicker than if you started your own. What's the end? What what is the end result of that? Is that retirement and reselling the business at right. some time? Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of businesses that really, hey, when you buy into it, we talk about really just generating an income. Mm-hmm. doesn't have much value at the end of the day. Right. So even right. if you own it for 10 years, you might sell it for what you what you paid to get into it, if that. There's other businesses that when you're, you know, developing property and you're developing equipment or vehicles or some type of other type of inventory that ho- holds money, you can mm-hmm. sell it for, you know, a very well, you know, gain at the end of the day, a very big multiple per earning. Start right. at that end point and then go backwards from there. Yeah, I, I, I think that's great advice, Joshua. So as 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 the CEO and founder of the company, I, I could ask you the last question. I mean, if you can look into a crystal ball, Joshua, like if, whether it be a year or three years or five years down the road, what are Joshua uh, Tree's plans for the future? Yeah, we do. We work uh, on our plan and our vision all the time. We have mm-hmm. a, we we have a goal to sell eleven franchises next year. Okay. And we have an aggressive marketing plan. We have an aggressive uh, director of franchise development that uh, is going to be in place to help us do that, building right. our, our relationships with our, our networks. And we have a BHAG, right, big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm-hmm. In 10 years, we want to deliver 1 million services. Wow. And that's going to be between corporate, give you an idea, like last year at corporate, we just delivered over 40,000 services. Wow. Uh, so in our 10 years, we want to deliver up to 1 million uh, services. That's incredible. What's what's the best way, Joshua, for our listeners to get more information on, on Joshua Tree Experts? Um, as far as, the, of course, the franchise opportunity, but even the service itself, are there any like websites you can kind of direct them to? Yeah, there's two different websites, joshuatreexperts.com. That's okay. going to be our consumer website. You can also go to jtefranchising.com. You can hit us up on uh, Facebook. You can okay. hit me up on LinkedIn, uh, Joshua Malik. And you can always email us at info at joshuatreexperts.com. That's fantastic. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you today, Joshua. It was such a pleasure and privilege to finally get a chance to talk to you. And I'd really like to invite you back over the next year or so if it's okay to, to you know, continue the story. I would love that, and I want to say, hey, nice job on the interview. I really appreciate your time, and uh, you did a fantastic job. This has been my pleasure, Joshua. And we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes in Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. 
Hi everyone, this is Marty McDermott from Franchise Interviews and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, Don and I have been hosting Franchise Interviews now over two years. With During that time frame, we've had some incredible quotes on our show. Today you're going to get to hear from Steve Beagleman, who is a franchise expert and veteran. And Steve answers the question, should I go with a small franchise system or a large franchise system? And I thought Steve's response was quite brilliant. So first we'll hear a quick word from our sponsor, and then Steve Beagleman with, should I go with a small franchise system or a large franchise system? Take care, everyone. Are you one of those special people who are willing to go after your dreams and goals? Are you ready to fulfill that dream of owning your own business with the security of a proven brand, the opportunity to take control of your future, and own a Rita's Italian Ice franchise is within your reach. Rita's is seeking success-oriented individuals who are ready to make a change in their life, and Rita's offers unparalleled training and support to assure your success. And did you know the frozen treat industry is a recession-proof industry and there are Rita's in 23 states currently with 540 stores open. Rita's Italian Ice has been around for 25 years and is listed as a top performing franchise by the Wall Street Journal. Now here's the really good part. Rita's Italian Ice is a unique and amazing taste treat. It's smoother than a snow cone and it combines ice with real fresh fruit. The real fruit adds dramatically to the taste, and it comes in over 40 flavors. The ice and fruit are mixed on site and made fresh daily, and it is delicious. You'll want to know more about this exciting and successful franchise opportunity. Go to www.ownaritas.com and get all your questions answered. That's www.ownaritas.com to take control of your dreams and future today. You don't want to wait any longer to be a part of this adventure. www.ownaritas.com Yeah, very important. So, uh, you know, you've been, you've been with small startup franchise companies. You've been at uh, the larger companies. What are some of the big differences between those two type of scenarios, Steve? Well, Don, smaller companies obviously give a lot of attention to the franchisee. So, you know, every franchisee, you know that franchisee by name. You can get a hold of, you know, the, the owners of the company or the CEO of the franchise system. Uh, pretty much you build very, very strong relationships when you're joining a smaller system. When you're joining a smaller system, you also typically get your choice of, of prime territory, maybe in your backyard where you want to be and open a business. You don't want to have to drive an hour to your, your store every day or your location. Right. So you get you get the prime territory, you get to know the the you know management team, the owners of the company and the concept, and really build that strong relationship. The challenge is the brands aren't as well known, so it takes time. And you know obviously you need to make a decision when you're a franchise candidate or a potential franchisee looking at concepts. Do you want to join a company that's in the infancy and the growth stage, or do you want to join a more established you know national brand? that has presence but it's going to have limited locations available. You might have to go a much farther distance to get that location. And they have, you know, proven systems in place. So you're going to have to follow that system to a T. And you're going to deal typically with a regional operations manager and training managers in that region. You're not going to get to know the top, top level of management in a large company, whether it's a you know, Dunkin' Donuts or a Dairy Queen or, or Yum! Brands. Uh, you're just not going to have that kind of interaction with the top management team. They're just too large of an organization. Again, great companies, but it all depends what you're looking for as a franchise, you know, candidate or potential franchisee. It's a real interesting question, though, huh? Like, you know, that, you know, that's where a franchise consultant come in, speaking to an expert like yourself, to really educate someone for that type of decision. Sure, sure. It, it is, it is a big decision, and you need to really know yourself. To know what you're you're looking for. If you want an absolute 100% proven concept that's been around, tried and true, then you're going to want to join one of the big big chains that have been around for 20 plus years that have, right. you know, thousands of units. But if you're more an entrepreneur and you kind of want to feel things out and be a part of the growth strategy of an organization and impact some of the marketing decisions and and, and decisions right. from an operation standpoint for an organization, then you're going to look towards a smaller company, a smaller company that you can have impact, that you could be on the Franchise Advisory Council, right. that you could really be involved with 
decisions that the company makes for growing the brand forward. If you have more territory. Franchise interviews from Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews.